So I'm just doing this tutorial mostly because I haven't seen any new or at least high quality recordings of settings for XLD Ripper. So I hope this helps some people out trying to achieve perfect rips for archiving. Um, so first of all, go ahead and download, let me see, the latest version of XLD Ripper. I'll leave a link in the description where you can pick it up. Um, once you have that already installed, go ahead and open it and then click com um, command parentheses or not parentheses, comma. Uh, if you don't know how to open that, you can just go up here as well and click preferences. That's where we're going to get started. So for this tutorial, we are going to do multiple formats. Um, this tutorial works as well if you just want to do one format like FLAG or MP3 or M4A. Uh, but in my opinion, if you're just archiving to like a storage drive, I, it's just more uh, time, better time efficiency just doing all these formats you need at once. So once you go here, click on the multiple formats option and you'll have this list right here. We have WAV, AIFF, MP4. Um, I'm personally going to use FLAC. Here are my settings for FLAC. I just have it on normal. And then there's going to be a tag that says allow to write replay game tags. Go ahead and uncheck that because it's not going to... It will still let you write the replay or the album game tags in the logs. But with, I find this does add high gain to the albums. And I don't want that. I Personally, I don't want that. At least you might want that, um, but I leave it off. And then there's going to be um, AIFF. I use that with these settings just because it's my preference instead of Wave. Since I use, uh, Wave, not Windows, I use Mac OS a lot. And then Apple Lossless, that's just M4A. And then I have Embed Q to Chapter, um, so that way it plays gapless. Once you have that, we're going to make a folder for these files to be saved in XLD Ripper. Um, I have a folder saved, I named it to desktop, so that's where they're going to show up for this demonstration purposes, so right over here. So that's where they're being saved. And then we have this set to Unicode UTF-8, and then Priority Normal, and then Maximum Threads. This one's going to be different for every computer. Mine, it's going to be six. For yours, it might be four or eight or higher. Depends. And then I just have this unchecked because it's just my personal preferences. File naming. We're going to use this string right here. There's going to be a default one, but this one, it's going to sort out the albums since this is a multiple, um, multiple, I forgot, multiple output one. There you go. Um, so this is album artist, album title, format, track number, and then track title. There's the little list. So what that's going to look like when it's outputted is like this. It's going to put out Coldplay and then the album title and then these folders. So you're going to have the FLAC, M4A, so on and so on. It's just a lot more convenient than having to sort it all manually. Um, there is also other strings you can do, so if you wanted to add other ones, you can do that. But I'll leave a link in the description so you can find some more strings or um, other settings to mess around with. But this is, in my opinion, the best one to use. If you have a two-disc album that you want to rip, you're going to put from percentage capital E backslash right here. And so if you have a two disc CD, it'll look like this when it rips. So let me check this one right here, Guns N' Roses. So here's the album and then the this is the disc number. So you see we have the uh, album artist, album title, percent D, that's our disc number. So we have two discs and here's the discs their files. So it's a lot convenient, it's a lot nicer. If you're gonna do it right, do it right. But since the CD we're ripping is just one disc, we'll just delete that. Batch, just go ahead and leave it like this, with zero right here. We leave this file blank, this page, nothing really changes. Metadata, go ahead and have it like this. I have embedded cover art images selected. You might not want that, you might not want cover art images in your files, but I do and then CD rip. Go ahead and click XLD Secure Ripper, retry count 100. Your sample offset will be different for your drive, so my ASUS drive is going to be different than yours. Um, it will set it automatically if possible as well. So I'll leave a link right here where you can find uh, all your drives or see if the offset is here. So it will be definitely the most useful piece right here for accurate rips. And then drive control automatic, 
query base, um, Accurip. You want to save the logs and the queue sheets, and then verify suspicious sectors. It will slow it down, but it will make sure that your rip is good. Um, sometimes you have CDs that rip really slow, and uh, this is probably why. And then the test before copy, have as fast. It's going to test the rip first, and then uh, then rip it. So um, I like doing these before. I never had it like that. It's I spent like a whole year. I had to rip CDs all over again because of that. But if you're going to rip the collection once and do it right, this is the way to go. And then scan replay gain. Having this checked will write those uh, album gain tags on there. It'll show up. Let me show you. It'll write the tags in the log for the... Uh, it's a lot of clicking, sorry. Right here, we're looking at them. So replay, track gain, and then up here you have your album gain. So that's what it'll do. So that's really nice. And then CD burn, I'm not even going to touch that. So. so yeah. So once we have that open, you're going to want to go ahead and click on open audio CD. Sometimes if you put a CD in and it doesn't show up, like in this case, it'll show up right here. But say it's blank or no CD is even being listed as read, you'll want to go ahead and click on refresh list. This will refresh it and scan for a CD. Once you have that open, you'll want to click um, the button again up top. This one's a Shift Command O. It's a lot easier using the the tat or the shortcuts for this. So it's going to start detecting the pre gap. It might take a while. It doesn't take too long, honestly, unless you have like a really scratched disc or a dirty one. Let's go ahead and do that. So sometimes we'll find the tags automatically. This will open up as well. Um, sometimes if for whatever reason you can't find metadata and you have an audio CD that's like imported or it doesn't show up, usually iTunes can pull it up for you for whatever reason. So get metadata. This is how you're going to get all the information. I'm just going to click on it anyway. US will change. There's an album art. So say you didn't want the album art, or that's the wrong one, or it's not good quality. What we can do is also, here's this website right here. I'll leave it in the description as well, where you can find the album art for any CD, pretty much. It's going to find the album art from iTunes and pull it for you. It'll provide a standard resolution, and then it'll pull a high def resolution or higher resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one. It's very useful for those obscure ones. And then just doing this, just drag and drop. So since we're setting it up with the string we're using, with the with it being set as album artist, and then album itself, we'll want to make sure that the uh, album artist tag is correct. So say you had one that was various artists, you might want compilation or various artists. Um, but make sure the album artist tag is right, like you fill that out at least. And then that one's saying disk one of three, that is weird. Let me check around actually. That is weird, okay, we'll just leave that. I'll edit that in another metadata ripper. And then last but not least, um, make sure include pre-gap for all tracks is clicked. This is going to rip it like it's a continuous CD, like you'd normally have one in the player. And then it'll uh, include all these pre-gaps right here that you'll see this one has a good amount. And then it just shows that our accurate rip um, connection is there. So once we have that, click Command S, or you can just click File, Save Q Sheet As, but Command S is a lot quicker. And it's going to save it to um, our XLD folder. So that's where all of it's going to be saved. And then just go ahead and hit Extract. So we'll get started with that. It's just waiting on the drive. And then it's going to test the rip. So you can see it's going at two times speed. It will vary for the speed for the disk you're ripping. This disk that I have right now is kind of a, a slow disk. It's got some scratches. I picked this one intentionally because it, I believe this copy that I have might have a uh, damaged sector or retry sector. Um, usually with the retry sectors, that means that it 
has to scan more than once. It's usually not that bad. Um, it just means it had to try a couple more times to read it. And then uh, let me see if I had one that had to try a couple more times while we wait. I might just fast forward it. No. All right, I'm not going to look for one. Well, I'll show you. It might be the CD. So we'll let this rip. It'll rip it and then test, then rip, test, then rip. So I'll be back. Okay. Ripping. So you'll get a log when you're done with the CD rip. Um, as you can see from the time we started, so 6.32 to like the time we started. I don't even know if it was 6.32, um, but I had to go do some other things. So this one took a while to rip because this one had a... It's not bad, but it's just a scratched up CD. So it, the time does vary when you have to rip one of these. Um, the log will look different when you have it finished. It's going to look white, actually. It's just that I accidentally clicked the X button out. Um, it will be saved into the uh, destination that we created. So we look here. This is the log we're currently looking at. It's this one. So. As you can see, it'll have values. It'll show um, the type of CD it was, if it was uh, any other information, uh, a value of the offsets, and the confidence level. So usually with these confidence levels, out of all these CDs, for example, um, it found 400 similar to that CD for this instance. Um, then we see that it's also got the album gain ripped, and then there's a jitter error. So with these jitter errors, with these errors in general, there's a read error, um, jitter error, retry sector count. These are the two I mostly like see the most. Uh, not that often with the damage sector, but mostly retry sector. This one just means that it just has to do multiple times. I had CDs that go over 400 with these, and you'll still get an OK up here. So these are all OKs. If you get a track that's not OK, you'll just see NG. Uh, all tracks except one track not ripped okay is what it'll usually say and it'll list that track number um, so this one's just showing uh, maybe fixed it might not be it might be like a slight jitter um, but as we can see they're all good it still gave the okay that it was ripped so this one is good to go it's all ripped it took quite a while though this one's like a heavily scratched CD it does vary like for the most part 90% of the CDs I've tried will go really fast. Um, let me see. I've done this for a while now. And we're currently storage wise. Let's see. Because once you do like a hundred of these CDs, you just start to get like a lot of space taken up. It's not going to load. Anyway, uh, I hope that helped you out finding how to rip perfect CDs and quality. Um, Rips. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and have a good one. Peace.